Welcome back, one and all. We have um, had a little change in programming scheduling. Uh, so I ended up playing about an hour to an hour and a half of Star Wars Force Un uh, Unleashed. Lots of fun. Boy, howdy, did I enjoy myself with that game. But recorded quite a few sessions, came out to be about three, and uh, found that it wasn't nearly as entertaining as I wanted it to be. Uh, if you really want to watch me beat on Stormtroopers with an overhand lightsaber throw for 25 minutes at a time, that might be up your alley, but it's not what I want to put on my channel. So, that being said, I'm changing gears. Er, er, er. Um, we're going to stick with a game that I played as a kid. One of my absolute favorite games. One of the first games I really got into and played through myself start to finish without like watching someone else play it first or... Um, having to ask for answers. It was, uh, it's called Air Today Gone Tomorrow. It's another King's Quest game. We are following the exploits of not King Grand this time, but his son Alexander. We may remember him from our King's Quest game playthrough, the, the snap happy, uh, prodigal son, as it were. So, this is a program called ScumVM. It's, uh, more or less a virtual machine that runs the Scum platform. And you can play all kinds of old games, uh, the Monkey Island games, if I was to download those. Uh, but the one I've downloaded is going to be King's Quest VI, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow. And let's go ahead and get this bad boy started. And maximize it so it isn't itty bitty. There we go. Oh my goodness! Take two. So, King's Quest VI, Air to Day Gone Tomorrow, this is the opening screen. Uh, a little bit about this game. Uh, before this, this was one of the first games I had personally on a CD-ROM. Uh, I remember the Christmas that I got my first CD-ROM drive for my computer. I was so super excited because I was that kind of nerd as a kid. And this is the main title screen for King's Quest VI. I tried to get the Sierra opening fanfare, but Scum has decided it wants to be an absolute numb skull today and hang up any time I'm trying to launch fraps while it's running. And older video capturing software should work better on older video games, but <laughs> joke's on me. All right, I'll put a little bonus feature of me yelling at it for, for a few seconds at the end, because I think it's it's always fun to yell at computers. So without further ado, um, let's go ahead and click on the opening here. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontree. Hey, Alexander. Do you recognize that shirt? Alexander, here you are. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Hmm, pancakes. Nope, not working. Oh, the music. Kasima, wait! Mother! Mother, come quick! Alexander, what on earth? You're white as a ghost. Mother, I saw Kasima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes! No, the bathroom mirror. Said her name three anger. times. How? The stars! Ah. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Hey, Vincent, can Alexander, you find anywhere else to be? If you really go... Be all right, mother. I promise. Seagulls, rats in the sea. Ugh. 
steal your ice cream cone and your thrasher's french fries without even asking. Long? Come on, what are we getting to, guys? Seagulls, find something to do. Ooh. I'm curious what stars he's guiding by in the middle of the day, but we'll just let that rest as a plot hole that I'm not gonna dive down. Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. That's ocean. That's what you're seeing, buddy. Ooh, that's not ocean over there. Land that looks home. like land home. Land home. Land home. So, significantly better artists or animation than Monkey Island, which came probably a decade and a half later, so that's good to know. The, the animation's just holding up pretty good so far. It's aging pretty well so far. We'll see. As the ship nears the shore, day turns to night, and the oh, sea turns back. violent. Uh-oh. Well, that's... that's no bueno. There's more or less credits, and I'm gonna skip them because I ain't got time Alexander for that. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Your king. Then Your king. he does remember: the shipwreck, the sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. We can hope. All right, so the uh, interface and um, how you walk him around is a little different. If you right-click the mouse, it cycles through all these things. Hello, I can say things. Uh, this is obviously walk or travel to. This is obviously pick up or uh, interact with. This is look at Cyclops. And again, we're talking to. So um, you can also get them all up here. Uh, if you just go to the top of the screen, it opens up. This is our inventory. Alexander is carrying nothing. Nothing. Oh, that's sad. And this is, of course, the... Uh, we can turn the volume up, we can turn the speed up, which makes him walk faster, which could be useful in areas we're walking back and forth, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We can turn the detail up and down. This was super important when you were running on uh, slower machines, sl machines with a dozen hertz instead of a couple hundred. So um, this is good to have. If you're running a really slow machine, you could turn the detail down. I'll just show you real quick what that does. Well, it doesn't change much here, but you'll see things move a little less. But since we're running a big old beefy modern computer... I say that sarcastically. We're going to detail all the way up. All right, so let's look around where we're at. A um, couple things about that intro. Uh, Kasima is a character that we met in King's Quest V. Uh, King Graham had to go find his family. He'd been trapped by... They'd all been trapped and shrank by a wizard. Again, King's Quest is weird. Um, <clears throat> and so he went to rescue his family, and when he went to the castle they were being held in, they, he met a scullery maid who used to be a princess named Kasima, who came from a land called the Land of the Green Isles. Maybe that's where we are. It looks pretty green to me. 
Um, so, uh, the other thing that's really cool about this game is the music, of course. I will gush over the music the entire time, because it's beautiful. Uh, also, the voice actors are significantly better. They did actually did voice acting on the CD-ROM release of King's Quest V. They fully voiced it. I was underwhelmed. So what's this over here? It looks like something shiny. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. Oh, we actually have something in our inventory. What's in our inventory? We have royal insignia Alexander's ring. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold Top and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Yeah, it does. All right. So this is where our inventory will be. We can interact, but uh, have things interact with each other. We can look at them, poke at them. Uh, pick them up and talk to them. Uh, that will actually be useful later. Um, so we can, of course, if we really are feeling crazy, um, we're going to make a death save just for funsies. And let's... Uh, Alexander has... I don't want to go there. I want to walk there. Let's go swimming. Maybe we can swim the out to... The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Uh -oh. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. No, that's that's not good. It's okay, let's, the let's underwater keep going. toe is a... Before Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. <laughs> Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. Who knows? Whoop. Yeah, you're kind of a crap swimmer in this the game. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. Bye-bye. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Yep. That would have been good, Alexander. Now this scene, this scene may look familiar Dickens. if you watched the oh. playthrough of the last Next. chapter of The Last King's Quest I did. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. Ah, the puns, the puns. So, we'll restore our death save. Now, you may see I've, I've played a little before. Um, so, the other thing the I'll say before we end this is... Um, well, let me do this first, because this is important. There are two Alexander main endings the to the game. To one, side. Um, one is the good ending, one is a the not as good ending. partially buried under sand. Good for it. So, the not-so-good ending is quicker. Um, you don't have to do specific parts that are very challenging of the game. You can still get an ending. You still complete the game. But it's not as happy. Uh, the, f the best ending is the one I'm going to be showing you here. Uh, I may make a save at the point of no return and then come back and as a bonus go through and just steamroll through the, uh, the not as good ending. What's in this box? The sand is warm No, I don't to want to touch. touch the warm sand. I know it's sword to the touch. Clicky on the box. There we go. There's something shiny. Alexander takes it. the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. What a treasure. What a haul. Alright, stand up, Alexander. Okay, let's see, what's this? What's Alexander this is carrying a copper coin of Devantry. Alright. King Graham graces the front of the coin. Hi, Dad. Well, we got some cash. We got a ring. We got a whole new island to explore, but we'll do that in the next video. This one was pretty much eaten up a lot by the intro. Like I said, that is like a whole movie in and of itself, and um, it's the first time they've really put that much detail in the art and video photography, I guess, into the first opening thing. They did a little bit with five, but it's a little less, uh, a little less impressive. So, on the next one, we will explore this island, which is, um, a couple different things. There's a big, nice-looking castle over there, a little arabesque, um, and that is actually kind of the theme of this entire, uh, island is kind of a Middle Eastern theme. Each of the islands have their own little theme, but we'll get into that later. Um, but as that is being said, we have uh, us at the tree and a little fork path. And next time we'll decide which way we're going to go. Until next time. All right. And this is the title screen for King's Quest VI. Air to Dagon tomorrow. Um, let's see if Scum crashes on me again. Come on, Scum. Don't be like that. Don't be that guy, scum. I'm just trying to maximize the screen. It should not be this difficult. OMG. Why you do this? Why you like this, scum? Why you like this? Alright. Alright, we're gonna do air today, gone tomorrow. Let's click on the opening. The fuck it.